Welcome back. This is the Tutor Wizard. I'm Adrian. Please subscribe right here. Hit the notification bell below for notifications for this series and a bunch of other topics and series on this channel. What we're going to do is a linear algebra series now. This will be a linear algebra one series specifically. I don't know what class is going to be called math 120 or 125 or whatever. We're going to do all the topics that should happen in a first year linear algebra one class. What we're going to do in this video is just give you an overview and an introduction to what the heck happens in a linear algebra class. But if some advisor is saying just try out linear algebra instead of calculus, I would probably say at first oh, hard pass because calculus you get prep from K to 12. Linear algebra is all going to be new stuff and all kinds of new terminology and horrible notation and then we're going to use it to describe planes and solving linear systems and solving eigenvalue questions and finding cross products and all of these types of things. And these, this is related to this somehow and what the heck is going on. So let's give an overview of the course. All right, so let's give an overview of what linear algebra one is going to do as done by a wizard, me, because a lot of classes are going to debate which order specifically this can happen in every textbook I've seen is according to Mark Solomonovich garbage. <laughs> and so some of them have to have the information we need. So I've taken a bunch of these garbagey books and followed Mark's book almost to what that was, but I still changed a couple things in his the order. So this is the way I'm doing it too bad. What we're going to do is systems of linear equations. Then we're going to do matrix algebra. Then we're going to do geometric vectors and lines and planes in space. Then we're going to transition to moving space around linear transformations or operators for two space and three space or up and down dimensions. Play all those games. Then we're going to do one of my favorite things of all math. Okay. Yeah. And then inside math, what's math? There's lots of topics, eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Let's go over and break down what's in each chapter. I'm going to call these chapters, five chapters. It's the five chapters of mathematical art. Oh, I guess that was already used several thousand years ago, but this will be my version of the five chapters of linear algebra art. All right, what we're going to call chapter one through this series is going to be systems of linear equations. This is the helicopter view before we go through the forest. You're like, I know I'm never going to get to drive a helicopter. Probably not. So why get your hands off of that? But as you're going through the jungle, at least I took you up one so that you can see the pitfalls that are going to be like happening to you and there'll be dragons over there and there's a waterfall over there and watch it. So yes, chapter one is going to be introduction and motivating examples. I like to give historical ones that are in books for thousands of years and people have been giving them to students all the way up and then now I get to give them to you on the YouTube. Don't call it the YouTube. I do what I want. Section two is going to be, we're going to step through this one at a time. First, we're going to deal with one equation and then one unknown. And you laugh at those, but this idea is actually the crux once we go through this horrible Gaussian journal elimination. Actually, this is how I solve all of these larger systems by just doing this one equation and one unknown idea by eliminating things. So we're going to do one equation and one unknown, then one, one equation and two unknowns, x plus y equals seven, and then we're going to get one equation with as many knowns as you want. Then what we're going to do is step it up. From here, what we're doing is considering one equation and stepping up how many unknowns we have. And then we say now we'll finally get a system where we have at least two equations and you could have two unknowns. And then what we're going to do is once you see that game, we'll generalize to having M equations and N unknowns. And that's arbitrarily large. You can have as many equations as you want and then many unknowns as you want. And we have a systematic way of solving all M by N linear systems using what we call row operations and something called Gaussian Jordan elimination. Carl Friedrich Gauss and Wilhelm Jordan are the two guys that do this. So they get their namesake. It probably wasn't them first. I know Fulker, I know. All right, chapter two is going to be matrix algebra. Once we have the notion of we're going to couch solving linear systems and Gaussian Jordan elimination, all these things you're going to find out, we're going to use this augmented matrix and then we're going to get it to where we have the unique solution, no solution or infinitely many solutions. Oh, you're going to hear me say that in these videos all the time. <laughs> what was that? There's only ever one solution, no solution, infinitely many solutions. Trust me, that's the fact. Once we do that, we're going to give in chapter two the general definition of what a matrix is, and then we'll get the linear operations, scalar multiplication and addition and those types of things. And then we're going to start doing, oh, the not so fun ones of the definition of matrix multiplication, how to take two rectangular arrays and make them multiply. It's not like numbers. Then what we're going to do is once we're doing this, we're trying to mimic the structure of the real numbers as a vector space or these 10 axioms. And when I add two matrices, it doesn't create a new thing. It just creates a matrix. And then when I scalar multiply, it doesn't create a new thing. And then scalar multiplication is coordinate wise. And then once we start building all that linear operators, then we get a matrix multiplication. Then we have to say, what is one times 
A is A, and we want to do the same thing for matrices. We want to say who times A is going to leave A alone when this is no longer real number multiplication. This is matrix multiplication, and oh no. So in this chapter, we're going to start mimicking the idea of real number properties with defining these new objects called matrices and how that matrix multiplication and all these things work. So we're going to get a matrix identity and then what we call a multiplicative inverse for a matrix. And then we want to know when do those exist and how do I find them. Once we do that, first we'll get solving linear systems with inverse matrices and we'll give you a first version of how to find inverse matrices using elementary matrices, which gives you a clever row reduction method like in chapter one of solving inverses. You're like, good, why would I keep going? Well, fractions abound and solving large linear systems is horrible. Carl Friedrich Gauss, who was first doing this, is looking for the orbit of Ceres, the largest asteroid in our asteroid belt. And he had some 24 equations and 28 unknowns or something ridiculous. So yeah, this is not going to be easy to solve. He gives the systematic way of doing this, but solving them is no fun. Instead, what we're going to do is get this whole theory called determinants and then three operations on determinants and how to compute these efficiently using cofactor expansion and three determinant properties. Then once we do that, we're going to give an inverse matrix formula. The inverse of a matrix, if it exists, is going to be 1 over the determinant of A, which has to be non-zero, so I can divide by it. That's a number times this cofactor matrix transposed, which we call adjunct or adjoint. Adjunct, says Mark, so adjunct. We're going to get a formula for it. Why would I want this? Because then I won't have to do this horrible row reduction business method to find the inverse. We're going to get an alternate way of finding the inverse. Then we use them to solve systems again, because that's what the course is, solving linear systems. And then we get Gabriel Kramer's rule, which says that solutions are actually usually nasty because when we see Kramer's rule, we see that the solutions are always can be viewed as ratios of determinants. So unless those determinants divide each other, they should always be fractions. He actually highlights the fact that they should normally be nasty. If you got a nice one, it was because I cooked it up for you. The universe doesn't care. Chapter three. We'll move on to geometric vectors, lines, and planes. What we're going to do in there is mimic what we did in chapter three two with matrices and structure them as what we're going to call a vector space. We're going to do the exact same thing with these things called geometric vectors. We're going to define a new object. We're going to define a scalar multiplication and an addition. We're going to show that they're closed and that doesn't create new things. Then we're going to do all the algebra where we need a zero vector which leaves anybody alone. And then we need an antipodal or inverse or negative vector. And then we get all the algebra that we're doing. So along the way what we're going to do is basic definitions and linear operations again but for geometric vectors, then we'll do vector algebra, the zero vector and antipodal vectors and all this kind of stuff. Then we'll move into what we mean by these two horrible, horrible definitions for you called linear independence and span. You're welcome. And then we will do the description of lines and planes and spaces, space, spaces. He just wanted it to rhyme spaces and their bases. It doesn't rhyme anyways. It's lines, planes, and space and their bases. This is the plural of basis is bases. Anyways, one three-dimensional construct is hard enough to describe. Let's work on one of them. And then, yes, if we can think of a four-dimensional construct, there's infinite many copies of three space and four space. But we'll get to that after we describe them. Then what we need is some more machinery. So we're going to talk about a scalar product, which is called a dot product. It takes two vectors and creates a number. And then we're going to talk about cross product and this only works in three dimensions but luckily we're in the singular space and so there will be a cross product that works in three space and it creates from two geometric vectors in three space another one which is perpendicular to both we'll get into it watch the videos and then we're going to describe lines and planes in three space using this notation in this section and then we're roughly half done the course and then now here comes the hard stuff This one's Jasper. She's harassing us in the background anyway. Okay, go play. Chapter four is going to be linear transformations. We'll do as we always do, the basic definitions and properties. Then we're going to do one-to-one -one onto an invertible transformations. This is one that's a little bit more complicated section. Then what we're going to do is show that every, these are the same objects essentially, which is weird at first, but we're going to get into the fact that there's a standard matrix for every linear transformation. If you have a transformation that is linear, you can describe that as matrix multiplication on the left by a matrix. And if you have a matrix, you just define that transformation to be the multiplication on the left by the matrix and you can define a linear transformation. So linear transformations and n by n matrices are the same object, essentially. So we'll get into that in that section. And then what we're going to do is composition of transformations. 
and then one of my favorite yaw pigeon roll and how we do autopilot in an airplane and stuff like that we're going to give a demographic of op linear operators on two space and three space chapter five is going to be one of my favorite topics and basically the three ingredients i needed to get my phd which happens to be mathematical modeling primarily of the spread of infectious diseases i used graph theory i used linear algebra specifically eigenvalues eigenvectors and then i used a whole bunch of differential equations in this course, we'll tone it back a little bit. What we're gonna do is eigenvalues, eigenvectors. In an average course, you barely get to this. And then we do in the second linear algebra, we start talking about this. But because this is my channel and I do what I want, wizards be wizards, we're gonna do, roughly speaking, the basic definition and properties. And there's a whole bunch hidden in there, spectral radius and all these types of things. We'll get to a bunch of terminology. Then there's more terminology. <laughs> Once we have the basic terminology, there's algebraic and geometric multiplicities. And what do those mean? And then we will do this process of diagonalization of matrices. And then when you can't diagonalize, what do you do? Hands of the air? Well, yes, at first. And then you follow Jordan again, and we get Jordan normal form of a matrix, which will be generalized eigenvectors and what to do when you can't diagonalize a matrix. That's the continuation of which would they never tell you. That stuff eventually will get used for one of my favorite things, using matrix functions to solve differential equations. That will be in a video somewhere at some point. Please subscribe right here, hit the notification bell. I'll see you for this series and a bunch of other ones on our channel. I better see you there.